Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Pat McHugh. I'm a veterinarian at Colorado State University and an equine reproduction specialist. I'm here with Dr. Bill Swires. Bill's the head of Smart Ranches Incorporated, and they're the group that has the frozen semen to dash the fame. And what Bill and I have talked about is, uh, is an educational opportunity to get all horse owners and breeders that are interested in breeding to the frozen semen from dash to fame, get them all up to speed all at the same time. A number of you have asked questions about breeding, about uh, breeding management and, and how frozen semen will arrive. So we've, uh, we've got a presentation that hopefully will answer all those questions all at the same time. Now you also have an opportunity for the next couple weeks to write in some more questions and I'll answer all those questions in written format and post them by February 1st. So let's just get right into the, um, to the presentation. So the objective of this webinar, and hopefully you can see all that, is to talk about frozen semen management, how semen is going to be shipped to you or, or your breeding facility, how to manage horses optimally for breeding with frozen semen, the proper uh, techniques to thaw semen, insemination techniques, and some concepts about breeding management of the mares after they've been inseminated because uh, there are some post-breeding issues that, that can occur with frozen semen, and, and, and they're pretty uh, easy to manage if you anticipate them. So the, in, in talking with Dr. Swires and, and making sure that we're all on the same page, uh, semen from Dash to Fame will be, will be transported by an overnight courier, probably FedEx, to whatever uh, address, shipping address you want, and it'll be arriving from uh, Smart Ranches and a dry shipper. And these dry shippers are a container of, of liquid nitrogen. It's actually a vapor shipper that doesn't have actual liquid nitrogen in it. The liquid nitrogen has been incorporated into the, the wall of the, of the container so that there's no actual liquid nitrogen in the container. It will be, it will be frozen, and then the outside uh, container is merely to protect the actual uh, dry shipper. They're going to send one breeding dose at a time for each estrus cycle. And the breeding dose will consist of uh, four straws of, of frozen semen. There'll be half mil straws, 0 0.5 mil straws. And the goal is to use one breeding dose per cycle. So all four straws in one extra cycle. If the mare doesn't get pregnant on that cycle, if you need more semen, they will send another breeding dose for the next cycle at that point. When the container arrives, the dry shipper arrives, you should remove the, the straws of frozen semen from the dry shipper and put it in the long-term storage uh, doer of liquid nitrogen and send the dry shipper back to uh, smart ranches as soon as you can. So that's the expectation is to transfer it to a longer-term uh, storage site in a standard uh, liquid nitrogen container. We'll talk a, a little bit about a pre-breeding examination on your mare to optimize pregnancy rates when using frozen semen, or honestly, when using any type of semen, whether it's fresh or cooled or frozen semen. And the standard, at least the easy procedure, straightforward ones for most mares, an ultrasound exam, and then hopefully a culture and cytology exam to make sure your mare is clean, as in not infected and ready to be bred. Ideally, we want that mare to be cycling, free of any infectious disease, before uh, considering breeding her. So the, the goal is going to be to monitor ovarian function, determine any ovarian abnormalities, uh, monitor the mare for uterine fluid, check out how much edema is present in the uterus, those types of things uh, before we get close to uh, breeding the mare. The suggestion for a culture is to determine if the mare is, again, clean or free of infectious disease, bacteria or fungal organisms. We want to identify what those organi organisms are uh, determine the antibiotic susceptibility patterns to know if, if a mare is infected, what are the optimal antibiotics that might be used to treat that infection. And those samples, those culture samples, should be submitted to a diagnostic lab for proper culture. We don't anticipate very many mares being infected. Uh, the common bacteria that we might see, the most common bacteria, is a strep infection. Uh, strep equi subspecies zoepidemicus is the most common bacterial infection in horses. Uh, some other ones, E. coli, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, occasionally pop up in, in mares. Young mares probably are not going to have any um, infections. These might occur more commonly. They do occur more commonly in middle age to older mares. Thankfully, fungal infections of the equine uterus are, are also not common, and the most common organisms, if we do find them, are Candida and Aspergillus. 
In the last few years, we've been recommending a uterine cytology as well as a culture for identifying inflammatory or infectious uh, issues in the uterus. And the, the goal is to identify the presence of inflammatory disease. Sometimes we're able to actually identify uh, bacterial or fungal pathogens in the uterus. And it, and it is uh, an adjunct to a culture used in addition to culture to optimize uh, characterization of, of the uterus. In this uh, photograph, we can see some uterine epithelial cells and some bacteria that were detected on cytology. Here's a white blood cell that has engulfed or phagocytized bacteria. So sometimes on cytology, we can actually see pathogenic organisms. The cytology is simply taking a swab or a brush uh, cytology sample using instruments that are made for this. They are rolled onto a glass slide. That slide is then stained and then looked at under a microscope. Here's an example of a uterine cytology from a mare that has no inflammation in her uterus, and all we see are normal uterine epithelial cells. That's what we'd hope to see. Sometimes a mare that has uh, an ongoing uterine infection or endometritis may have occasional uterine epithelial cells, but lots of, of white blood cells that are often very easy to see in these uh, cytology samples. The way we interpret this and there's a variety of ways to interpret it, is if we don't see any white blood cells in the uterus, it's suggested that there's no inflammation and typically no infection. We're going to cover that again in a moment. If we see one or two white blood cells per high-powered field, it would suggest mild inflammation. And then more than three or certainly more than five white blood cells per high-powered field suggest moderate to severe inflammation. Something we've learned about in the last few years is that not all bacterial infections create an inflammatory response in the uterus. With strep infections, the most common uh, bacterial cause of, of endometritis is commonly associated with, with a severe inflammation. So with strep infection, we would typically see lots of white blood cells in the uterus. With a gram-negative infection like E. coli, often there's not an inflammatory response associated with an E. coli infection, and so the cytology may end up uh, showing uh, mild to no inflammation, even though there are bacteria present. And really, the bottom line is a combination of tradition, traditional uterine culture and the cytology is really quite beneficial in, in detecting uterine disease in the horse. So we would recommend both culture and cytology exams for your mare prior to breeding to this, this dash to fame semen. If the mare is infected, uh, we would recommend that that infection be treated during that uh, particular estrus cycle and, and not, uh, the mare not be bred on that cycle, wait till the following cycle to optimize the use of this frozen semen. And then the management guidelines for the mares, uh, we would suggest that uh, your veterinarian start to evaluate the mares as they come into heat and maybe every two or three days until the follicle starts to grow, your veterinarian it would be quite adept at this. Once the follow gets to about 35 millimeters or greater, typically the mare is going to receive either human chorionic gonadotropin or desloralin acetate to induce a timed ovulation. And the goal is going to be to induce ovulation in a timely fashion so that uh, we can breed the mare appropriately. We'll talk a little bit about insemination doses and, and timing in just a moment. The options for breeding the mare are really up to you and your veterinarian. Uh, there'll be one uh, dose of semen, four straws provided. And as Dr. Swires has pointed out in, in some of the correspondence, you have an option of, of uh, how the mare is to be bred. You can put all four straws, thaw the semen, put all four straws of frozen semen in the mare, inseminate the mare prior to the anticipated ovulation. And that can work well if the mare ovulates on schedule. If the mare fails to ovulate in a predicted time period, or fails to ovulate close to the time that you've inseminated her, that may not end up as a, a viable pregnancy. Op a second option, option two, is to wait till the mare ovulates and then inseminate the mare with all four straws as a post-ovulation breeding. That's probably the way we're going to manage mares at Colorado State University bred with this semen. And then there's the alternative of you can split the dose, thaw two straws, and inseminate pre-ovulation and then confirm that, that the mare did ovulate at a second uh, ultrasound exam, and then uh, uh, inseminate the second two straws post-ovulation. 
So the goal of breeding with frozen semen, this, this is a, a generic statement for all frozen semen. The goal is to inseminate within 12 hours prior to ovulation or within six to eight hours after ovulation. With this particular stallion semen, with one dose available per cycle, anticipating the ovulation is great, but if the mare does not ovulate on schedule, you may be disappointed. So breeding post-ovulation is certainly a viable way to go, and again, that's a, that's a strategy that I think we're going to use at uh, CSU. After ovulation, that egg is only fertilizable for a, a finite period of time. And by 12 hours post-ovulation, uh, the, the percentage, the odds of a pregnancy occurring are fairly low. So two options to induce a mare to ovulate with, uh, with an ovulation-inducing agent, either HCG, which is the brand name Coriolan, or Desloralin acetate. The new FDA-approved drug is Sucromate. HCG will typically induce ovulation in mares within about 36 hours. Desloralin typically induces ovulation in a time period at about 40 hours. And the rules of thumb, general guidelines for breeding quarter horse type mares with either of these ovulation inducing agents, mares should be in heat and have a follicle, a growing follicle that is about 35 millimeters or greater in diameter. When that rule is, is applied, HCG again, 36 hours, Desloralin about 40 hours. This is a graph showing the follicular development in an average mare. So follicles are going to grow about three to five millimeters a day. And they typically will peak in size, and it's somewhere 40, 42, 45 millimeters in diameter. I'd suggest about 40 millimeters. They gain that size, and then they'll stay about that, uh, that diameter for a few days, and eventually that mare will ovulate. The difficulty with uh, breeding a mare without inducing ovulation is you're not ever quite sure when that mare will actually ovulate. So one of the goals with breeding a mare with, with, with any type of semen, cooled semen, frozen semen, is to induce a timed ovulation. And so there's a window of opportunity that's available to us where we can advance that ovulation into a time period that we can control. And we do that by administering an ovulation-inducing agent like HCG or Desloralin. And here's an example. If we give human chorionic gonadotropin when this follicle first reaches 35 millimeters or above, we expect that mare to ovulate in approximately 36 hours. And that will typically advance her own ovulation by about a day or a day and a half. Again, into that window of opportunity that we can control. Then, knowing that a mare is going to ovulate around 36 hours, we can breed that mare accordingly. But one thing I just want to point out that if you wait and wait and wait and give HCG uh, deep into heat on their fourth or fifth or sixth day of estrus, that mare at some point will be predestined to ovulate. She will ovulate on her own at some point. If you give HCG way out here, it's not that you've bought 36 hours before she ovulates. She may ovulate very soon after that because she was already uh, set in motion to ovulate. So we want to advance that ovulation into a window of of opportunity that we can predict and we can control. So again, the options for insemination of, of these mares, you can breed once before ovulation, or you can breed once after ovulation, or you can split the dose and put two straws in here and two straws in there. Here's a graph showing the data that has been generated on human chorionic gonadotropin, suggesting that after administration, a majority of the ovulations occur around 36 hours after drug administration. And just to point out as well that not every mare ovulates in response to HCG. On average, across the board, old mares, young mares, around 90% of mares will ovulate in a predicted time period following HCG. It's not 100%, never has been, and probably never will be. So you take a little bit of a risk giving HCG and saying, well, I'm going to presume the mare is going to ovulate at around 36 hours and breed her just before that, because if she does not ovulate, if she's part of that other 10%, then you've really wasted that frozen semen for that cycle. The next hormone to mention is desloralin, and the average interval from administration to ovulation for desloralin is somewhere around 40 hours. And again, around 90% around, uh, of mares will ovulate in a, in a set time period after desloralin administration. 
not every mare, and it's about the same percentage as with HCG. So here's an example of a, of a protocol for administering, we're going to pick Deslorelin uh, for this example, and how you can time the insemination relative to when you give, when you give Deslorelin and when you expect ovulation. So if the mare comes into heat and has a follicle 35 millimeters or greater, if you give Des Deslorelin at 8 p.m., you might expect an ovulation around 40 hours later, which would be noon a day and a half later. And just to point this out, just to make sure, you can change this time period to whatever suits you and, and your facility. For a lot of veterinarians, it's convenient to breed with frozen semen during the middle of the day when people are available and a lot of help is available, as opposed to breeding with frozen semen in the middle of the night. And with this protocol, administering Deslorelin somewhere between 8 and 10 p.m. will typically facilitate that mare, inducing her to ovulate during the middle of the day when people are available. So we would typically administer the Deslorelin. The following day, we may ultrasound her multiple times to make sure that if she did ovulate a little early, we're ready for it, and as soon as we detect ovulation, we'll thaw semen and inseminate. But we do anticipate her ovulating around noon the following day. So we'll ultrasound her in the morning, maybe 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning, and then we anticipate the ovulation occurring somewhere between that ultrasound exam and noon. And, and as soon as we do detect ovulation, we can immediately thaw semen and inseminate. The general principle is that, that we're going to ultrasound the mare in that uh, finite period of time for about a day, multiple times a day. And then once we detect ovulation, we're going to thaw the semen and then inseminate the mare. That way we confirm that yes, the mare did ovulate and that way it'll optimize our opportunity to get that mare pregnant. One should always uh, thaw semen using the directions that's provided by the people that, that did the initial freezing of the semen. There are two, uh, two strategies that have worked well for this one. The directions that come with the semen will probably say uh, 37 degrees Celsius in a water bath at that temperature and thawing it for 30 seconds. Dr. Swires has a second protocol that also works well, 46 degree water bath, centigrade water bath, and thawing for 20 seconds. We do recommend that a timer be used and, and that a, a thermometer be used to verify the, the uh, temperature of the water. And, and thawing should be at using one of those two protocols. There's a variety of ways to inseminate mares. And so multiple techniques can be used, and here's just one suggested technique. But if your veterinarian has a different technique for depositing semen in the mare, that's fine. Uh, one protocol is to uh, use the four straws, uh, dispense the four straws of semen into a, a glass vial, a clean or sterile glass vial, and then load the insemination pipette from that semen that's in that glass vial. Other people may use a, a different pipette style where the straws, individual straws are loaded down in the pipette. Both, both ways work fine um, and, and there's really no advantage of one over the other. It's really personal preference of your veterinarian. If you're using the uh, AI pipette technique, what we typically do is, is put a small uh, amount of air up in the AI pipette, then draw the semen up into the pipette with, a, with half mil straws and a four straw dose. There'll be uh, two mils of, of semen that will be drawn up into the AI pipette. Then when we're up inside the mare, up in her uterus, pressing the plunger on the syringe, the air that's up in here will, uh, will have all of the frozen thawed semen pass out up into the uterus of the mare. Your veterinarian will have two options of where to, to deposit the semen. Uh, the standard approach for inseminating mares is to deposit uh, semen in the uterine body. A lot of veterinarians like to do a deep uterine horn technique for using frozen semen. And with a deep horn insemination technique, the AI pipette is directed up a uterine horn, up near the junction of the uterus and oviduct, and obviously on the side uh, that has a large preovulatory follicle. And doing this deep horn insemination technique does require our manipulation of the pipette and the uterine horn uh, per rectum. So your veterinarian will, will pass the, 
uh, pipette up through the cervix using a vaginal approach and then come back out and go per rectum to manipulate the pipette up to the tip of the uterine horn. And that can also be very effective with, with using frozen semen from any stallion. We do recommend that the semen be evaluated after the mare is inseminated. So there should be a residual, typically there is a residual amount of, uh, of semen, very small amount left in the bottom of the glass vial. A small drop of that is put on a glass slide, looked at under a microscope uh, for motility. We expect to have good motility with this semen, but you should always look to verify that. With any mare that's bred, whether she's bred with fresh or cooled or frozen semen, the mare may have an inflammatory response occur following breeding. It may be more common to have them with, uh, with frozen semen due to the, uh, the lower amount of seminal plasma involved, but one should look. If, if you're, breeding prior, to if you're uh, breeding prior to ovulation, you do want to make sure that the mare did in fact ovulate. The, the way we're going to manage our mares is that we're going to do post-ovulation breeding. But then the next day, we still want to look at the uterus to determine if the mare had a, a post-mating inflammatory response to the fact that she's been inseminated. And some mares will develop a large amount of inflammatory fluid in their uterus after insemination. And that, uh, that needs to be evaluated. If it does, it's very treatable. If it's not recognized, then pregnancy rates will be reduced. Therapy for uh, post-mating inflammatory reactions are typically uh, uterine lavage, simply rinsing out the uterus to get rid of the inflammatory fluid, white blood cells, uh, dead spermatozoa, etc. And often oxytocin is given as well to induce uterine contractions. Between uterine lavage and oxytocin, or sometimes oxytocin alone, it's generally one is able to, uh, to get rid of that inflammatory fluid and again optimize the chances for that mare to get pregnant. If you know a mare has had inflammatory reactions following breeding on, on a previous estrus cycle or the previous year, then the suggestion would be to breed her just one time, uh, AI or just one time, because every time we inseminate a mare like that, we're going to induce an inflammatory reaction. And then your veterinarian may also um, think about giving an anti-inflammatory like dexamethasone to limit the inflammatory response that may occur. So in summary, to maximize the opportunities to establish a pregnancy with a frozen, frozen semen from DASH to FAME, we'd recommend that the mare be evaluated, have a breeding soundness evaluation performed prior to her coming into uh, the, the heat that she'll be bred on. And um, so ultrasound exam, culture and cytology. We'll try to time inseminations, time the, uh, the ovulation so that we can, can optimize pregnancy rates breed as close to ovulation as possible, and then don't forget to do follow-up ultrasound exam to verify that the mare did not have any inflammatory reactions following breeding. A number of you have written in questions already, and I have a variety of questions that are, have been posted already, but we're going to give others an opportunity to, to submit questions up to about January 23rd. And then after January 23rd, I'm going to take all of those questions. Hopefully, I've answered a lot of the questions that people had coming into this webinar. But after January 23rd, I'll collate all those questions, uh, write out uh, responses, and we'll, we'll post them on about uh, February 1st. And you can submit your questions to uh, the email address jbar1 at colostate.edu. And we will post the answers on both websites from Smart Ranches and from the Colorado State University Equine Reproduction Laboratory. And finally, uh, there'll be an opportunity to uh, bid on a breeding to Dash to Fame frozen semen. The deadline for that, uh, that auction is February 15th, and you can go to the Smart Ranches website for more information on that opportunity. And there'll be other stallions involved in that auction as well as, as Dash to Fame. So please, if you have questions, uh, email them to us. I'll go back to that website. Uh, the email address actually jbar1 at colostate.edu. So with that, uh, Dr. Swires, I know we've got a couple questions that people have asked. I'm going to ask you to give me a hand answering just a couple of these questions. Hopefully we've addressed 
uh, many of them. One question that came in was with uh, pregnancy rates that you've experienced with, with this semen. What, uh, what should generally, a, a general pregnancy rate answer across the board, all stallions, all mares, it's quite variable, but somewhere uh, 40 to 50% pregnancy rates per cycle is what is expected with frozen semen. That's going to be higher in young mares, higher in, in post-bowling mares. They've already had a history of proven fertility. And it's going to be lower in aged mares and mares with a history of reproductive issues. So from your experience, uh, this semen, what should people expect uh, per cycle with frozen semen? Um, with uh, the dash to fame frozen semen, we would expect uh, pregnancy rates to be basically what you said uh, with younger mares and with older mares. That's also why we've asked that um, mares be selected and evaluated prior to, to being bred with the semen. So owners should expect somewhere around a 50% a pregnancy rate, a little higher with young mares, might be a little lower if, if the mares have a history of, of reproductive issues. That's right. But 50% would be expected in, in most mares and most stallions with frozen semen. One other question that has come in, and that is, um, can one acquire uh, semen from Dash to Fame and use, use it for in vitro fertilization? And presuming what, what the question is, right now, true in vitro fertilization in the horse is, is not done where an egg is essentially put into a Petri dish, spermatozoa are added, and th then those sperm uh, penetrate the egg for fertilization. That can be done in cattle, it can be done in humans, but we're really not at that point in the horse. What is done in the horse to create an embryo from an in vitro standpoint is sperm injection. And that's done at a variety of places, including Colorado State University. If a, if a person is generally done uh, with mares that might have an issue getting pregnant and carrying their own foal. So would there be the possibility of frozen semen available for sperm injection if, if an owner had a mare that uh, might require that? Yes, we have um, semen available to fit that nature for that. for that purpose. Right, right. Okay, and then uh, a lot of the other questions that have been sent in already, we've tried to address in this, in this webinar. So I think at this point, um, we'll, we'll stop this. Uh, Again, give you an opportunity to send in more questions and happy to answer those. We like the questions by January 23rd. We'll post the questions by the end of January. And, uh, and we thank you for your time. And Dr. Swires, good luck with, uh, with this endeavor. Yes, and I just wanted to thank uh, Colorado State University and, and Dr. McHugh to graciously offer to host this for, uh, for not only the Dash to Fame uh, mare owners that I'll be breeding to him this year, but to anyone else that has had an opportunity to, to view the, the webinar. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Our pleasure. Thank you for attending. Take care.